If your spouse were abducted, you'd expect to get help from the police. You'd hope they'd spring into action and do all they could to find your missing spouse. But when Susanna Ko's husband went missing in Malaysia and she visited the police, it felt more like an interrogation, like they were accusing her of wrongdoing. Yes, it was uh, really very traumatizing for me, being in a, a room with bright lights and an officer was uh, questioning me. And it was strange that he wasn't asking the, the normal questions you would ask family of the victim. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help right now on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Her husband, Pastor Raymond Coe, was abducted a little more than two years ago in Malaysia. Susanna mentioned the uh, CCTV security uh, camera footage of the abduction. We'll link you to that if you come visit us at vomradio.net. It was quite an amazing professional operation. As you mentioned, it took 40 seconds uh, for this whole thing to happen. So before your husband was abducted. Had he been threatened? Did did he know there was a risk of this or did this happen just completely out of the blue? Okay, in 2011, uh, Raymond had held Thanksgiving dinner for our partners and uh, sponsors as well as our our stakeholders, uh, those whom we reach out to who are needy and and uh, we had set up a social organization called Harapan Community. So we just wanted to thank the sponsors and we were holding it in a church. However, that night, for the first time in Malaysia, a church was raided by the police. And after that incident, my husband and I received a death threat in the in form of, uh, uh, I had a white powder let's say anthrax, uh, with a letter written in red. My husband had two bullets, life bullets, in a box uh, with a threatening letter saying that they will kill us. And they alleged that, yeah, we um, had proselytized yeah, Muslims. So let me just kind of catch up our listeners. Mm. If, if you're not an ethnic Malay in Malaysia, it's perfectly legal to be a Christian be part of a church and go but if you're an ethnic Malay you have to be a Muslim (laughs) and so the the government was saying hey you're having this celebration and you've invited Muslims to come here you're not supposed to do that correct so when those threats and obviously when you talk about somebody sending a box with bullets in it how did Pastor Raymond respond to that how did he think about that or or keep on working in spite of those kind of threats. Yes, he continued, even though uh, there some uh, fear and anxiety, but he felt that the Lord called him to fulfill the Great Commission. And and that means uh, to every tribe, nation and tongue. And he does not discriminate. So we just carried on our our work, you know, with the poor, the needy, the marginalized, and with God's grace, we carry through. So it's like it's almost six years, five or six years, we did not have uh, We are kind of uh, frozen in grief. We, we do not know if he is uh, dead or alive. When Susanna Liu's husband left the house on February 13th, 2017, Little did she know that it would be the last time she would see him. Fast forward to the present, and one can sense the sadness in her voice as Liu still vividly recalls the date. That fateful Monday, she was supposed to bring some food supplies to a friend, but had been too busy in the morning to do so, at which point her husband returned home to help. 
Uh, and uh, he always say, uh, you know, I love you. Mm-hmm. Before uh, he he goes out the door, or you know, before he leaves, he always say, I love you to me or my children. So I, that was uh, like his last uh, words. Uh, I have not seen or heard from him since. The disappearance of Liu's husband, Pastor Raymond Ko, was soon to grab national attention following what was seen as a clear case of abduction. As events unfold, it was later ruled an enforced disappearance at the hands of the special branch, amid accusations he was attempting to convert Muslims to Christianity. Uh, It uh, has been a very difficult and challenging uh, four and a half years now for uh, our family uh, because uh, of the uncertainty uh, and also um, we have uh, pract- practically no no news and no update uh, from the police or the government uh, on the status of the investigation uh, and so um, it's like uh, we are kind of uh, frozen in grief. We, we do not know if he is uh, dead or alive. And uh, it's um, uh, making it very difficult. It's- For the family of Ruth Sitepu and her husband Joshua Hilmi, who disappeared in late 2016, it is very much the same story. Ya, pertama kan kami dapat kabar itu kan dari anak abang kami yang ada di Malaysia yaitu Heris Tepu. Jadi dulu Heris Tepu itu kan sangat-sangat dekat sama Ruth dan Joshua. Jadi dikabarilah ke kami eh, kalau kakak Ruth itu dah dia pun dah hilang kontak, nggak pernah jumpa lagi dan rumahnya pun kosong. Setelah itu dia mengabari kami, baru kami pun beberapa bulan kami tunggu juga mungkin dia entah pindah ke mana atau ke negara lain gitu. Tapi hmm, si Harry pun sangat yakin kalau dia memang uh, hilang gitu. Jadi kami pun semakin lama semakin was-was. It was only when they saw videos online detailing Ko's disappearance that they began to suspect their sister had met a similar fate, although official investigations are ongoing. Like Ko, there have been claims the pair may have been involved in converting Muslims. Kami keluarga semua sangat-sangat sedih. Sampai saat ini beritanya belum, belum jelas. Biasanya kalau kita keluarga, pirasat kita, kontak batin kita terhadap keluarga pasti ada. Ini kami tidak ada pirasat yang jelek terhadap Kak Rut. Makanya kami masih yakin Kak Rut masih hidup. Liu shares the same hope for her husband Ko. And it is her dream that they will one day be reunited. My, my family and I and uh, our uh, friends uh, some of us have had dreams that uh, he's still alive uh, and as long as we do not see his body, we believe that he's not dead. And so I will continue to my efforts to uh, not only speak out but you know do, to do all I can to get him uh, released uh, and the others as well. Uh, wherever Pastor Raymond is, uh, God is with him, whether he is alive or whether uh, he is martyred. He is a hero uh, to us because he believed in his convictions and he lived it out. He would tell me, as long as there's life, there's hope. And I always remember that until today.
For many, Father's Day is a day for celebrating that special man in your life. But for Esther Ko, there is only the empty space her father, Pastor Raymond Ko, once filled. Raymond left their home in early 2017 and has not been seen since. In 2019, the Human Rights Commission of Malaysia concluded after a public hearing that he was the victim of enforced disappearance at the hands of the special branch. I miss him just being there. He always, he's always um, making sure that things are okay in the family. So his presence is what um, gives me a lot of confidence and strength. Seven years on, Esther still longs to see and be with her dad. And as Father's Day rolls around, she can't help but miss him even more. Some of my favorite memories, it would be just having conversations with him in the car. I uh, remember once I was upset about uh, a problem with, I was having with a friend and he was listening very patiently to me. And all he said was, you know, um, like God knows. And that, that really comforted me. There are memories that still make her smile, such as when Raymond would read stories and sing songs to her before bedtime. But he will fall asleep first before me. So when it stops, then I know <laughs> he's asleep. Life has not been the same since February 13, 2017. And as the family continues to search for answers, several things give Esther strength. I find strength to cope from the people who support um, his case. And that reminds me uh, this, how uh, Malaysian citizens are concerned about his disappearance. It gives me strength to continue to want to find out the truth because we need to, to have a closure and we need to know what happened. Hope, as professed by Raymond, also keeps her going. She says she saw this in her father's desire to help those in need by starting a reading room for the poor and helping victims of the 2004 tsunami. Those um, acts that he did shows to me that he believes that there's hope for such a dif difficult situations that people are in. He used to tell me, um, there's always hope. So when, if I am facing problems, he always tell me, as long as there's life, there's hope. And I always remember that until today.